Welcome back. For a few weeks I've been teaching on healing. And so what happens to me? I get hit by pain. So today's message is more of a testimony. When pain hits, what do you do? Now I'm sure those of you who watch me regularly are wondering, is this guy for real? Does he really practice what he preaches? Or is it just, you know, making up messages and teaching them online? And looking at the stats, oh yes, so many people like this and so on. No, what I teach is what I live. And pain hit me a couple of days ago. I was on a longer dog walk. I had to uh, get back quickly for a Skype conference. And uh, when I got back, I walked too quickly and I had a little bit of pain in the back of my leg and so on. And I thought, ah, I know what that is. That, that is sciatic nerve inflammation. Now, that's by knowledge because I, I know stuff like this. So I took some quercetin, which is a natural supplement to uh, calm down the inflammation. And then I went on a search and destroy campaign to find out where my defensive shield of faith was damaged or breached. That shield of faith is mentioned in uh, Ephesians 6 and verse 16. Now, what had I done wrong? Where had I not forgiven somebody? Or, or, or where had I not repented over something? I was looking for uh, the way in, the devil looking for that way through my shield of faith. The full body armour used by Roman soldiers quenches all the fiery darts of the enemy. But the leather needs to be in good condition. It needs to be oiled, presence of the Holy Spirit, on our shield of faith. Okay, so I refuse to research this nervous muscular pain. I'm not going on Google and feed my unbelief, which I, is what I'm sure 99.9% .9 people do. They go on Google and look at, and analyse their problem, analyse their sickness. I don't do that. I do the opposite. I create an atmosphere of healing. I've been teaching on creating an atmosphere of healing recently. I was talking about a cocoon which is where we go into a time of being quiet with the Lord, and let the Holy Spirit and his angels do some therapy on us. Now, a useful way to build a cocoon of, of uh, his presence is to sing praises. Why do you do that? Because in Psalm 22 and verse 3, the psalmist wrote, because he inhabits the praises of his people the praises of his people. If you want to find God in a hurry, then praise him because he actually inhabits, when you create an atmosphere with your songs, with your praise and worship, God comes down and meets you. He draws near to you. In fact, God lives in the courts of heaven on Mount Zion in the city of the living God. Hebrews 12 and verse 22. When you get some little pain now and again, you know, it hits you and you think, oh, well, I just speak against that. And I, I just lay my hand on, on my part of me that hurts and I command it to leave. Usually it does. But some pain is persistent. And I think, OK, I'm going to have to go to court. I'm going to take this to court. Now, I'm going to take it to court in the courts of heaven, as I say, in Mount Zion. But how do you approach this court? Well, in Psalm 100 and verse 4, this is what the psalmist wrote. He says, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. Psalm 100 verse 4. Also in Hebrews in the New Testament, we are told, approach his throne. Now the throne is in the court. Approach his throne boldly to obtain mercy and grace to help in time of need. Now, I tell you, I needed that uh, supply of grace as I was walking today along the tracks with the dogs. I'm thinking, can I go to the end of this track? I'm in so much pain. I leant against the wall and was almost in tears with the pain. So I needed help. <laughs> help, Lord. I can't make it to the end of the track. So that's what we need to draw on, his grace. Now, we have access to his grace by faith. So I'm using my faith. I say, Lord, I'm accessing 
your grace, which is the power to do your will. His will for me today was to exercise my dogs. So I need your grace to do it. I can't do it on my own. I need you to help me. Now we approach the throne of grace and we know that we can enter into the Holy of Holies. This is in Hebrews 10, verse 19 and 20. It says, we know and believe that we can enter the Holy of Holies by the blood of Jesus, the new and living way through his flesh. Now, Jesus was a man. He was like me. He's covered in flesh. He's a spirit, but he's covered in flesh. When the flesh was cut, then the spirit was able to come through. And when that Roman soldier pierced Christ's side, Matthew 27, verse 51, and Christ's blood flowed out at the same point when he died, the curtain, the huge wide curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. So what looked like a defeat? Here was the, the master, the saviour, on a cross, dead and crucified. It looked, looked like defeat. In fact, it was the greatest victory ever because he made that separated curtain fall down and allow man to contact God in the Holy of Holies. So we can now commune with Father God because of the blood of this new covenant. Now, let me show you a simple way into this court. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to attempt to sing Psalm 3 and verse 3, just singing the scripture. My glory and the lifter of my head, my glory and the lifter of my head. For thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory and the lifter of my head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. And he heard me out of his holy hill. There you go. You're in the presence of God. You sung scripture. You praised him. Now make this decree. Surely he has borne my sickness. He has carried my pains. And by his stripes I was healed. Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. My shield of faith is intact. It's anointed with holy oil. Now all pain go in Jesus' name. Amen.